We rolling? We are. What are we talking about today? We're talking about Harmony today. Okay. And cool. the studio. Thank you for helping me set it up. Yeah, it's looking good. It's almost done. And uh, I thought you'd come over last week. We did something at your place. Right. Today, we're going to talk about harmonization. Yeah. Using three inner string scales and pentatonic patterns. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. It's cool. going to be great. Yeah. Well, That's... and we've been in front of these lights now for how many hours? Ooh, a while. So if one of our eyes starts randomly <laughs> closing, that's that's probably why. And you'll find out after this. All right, so Chris, I, I thought before we get started, we should talk a little bit about the two main types of harmony that exists. Yeah. Uh, there's the, we'll call it the musical intelligent harmony. Yeah, That's diatonic harmony. Diatonic, follows yeah. the major scale. Mm -hmm. Or any other seven-note scale, really. Sure, sure. But yeah, we'll use the major scale as our, as our basis. Sure. And then the unintelligence, like the straight pitch shifter that you would get, you know, sometimes in effect. Uh -huh. And um, the, the, the main difference is that a pitch shifter is just going to take an idea, replicate that idea exactly as it is, same intervals and everything, just a few frets higher or lower. Right, right. The other one, can you explain the other one? The other one is going to take the notes of the scale and it's going to move intelligently with the notes of the scale. And so it's always going to be like a third above, for example, but sometimes, because we're following the notes in the scale, sometimes it'll be a minor third, sometimes it'll be a major third, because we're sticking to the same interval chemistry, or the, the order of intervals is the same. Yeah. And so when we go up a, a third, we're going up in the key, whereas the pitch shifter is just going to say, okay, we're here and we're here, no matter where we go. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Yep. Um, let's let's demonstrate really quick, just so that you have in mind what's going on. Let's say that I'm, I'm playing, I'm just going to play a straight uh, major scale, three note per string in G, this kind of thing. So that scale really is a seven note scale. There are more than seven notes that I'm playing, but these notes are just repeated over and over in an octave. And um, if we look at the distance between each of these notes, right here we have two frets, which is a full step, a full step, this is a half step, one fret, and so forth. The construction of that scale is gonna defer every, any time we have a new scale. That's the, the blueprint of the scale. Whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Exactly. For a major scale, that's right. what we'd have. The intelligent harmony would be basically taking that same exact construction of the scale, and let's say that we're, we have a pattern that's just ascending here, um, and we do a harmon uh, harmony a third up, we would take the, the third up that first note, so can't just count one, two, three, that's going to be your starting point. So as you're playing that note and I'm playing that note, we'll have a harmony a third up. Okay. Right. And if that's our... Um, our factor here that we're going to use, the third, then you're just going to follow the, the direction that I'm going to go in. And here it's really simple. I'm just ascending my scale. And so if we have, um, trying to do something a little fancy here, uh, if I just ascend my scale, you're going to ascend uh, the same exact scale starting from that third up. Right. So let's give that a try. Okay, let's do it. Um, we'll do something like I don't know how to count. One, two, three, four. four. Awesome. So that that worked, and then it was very harmonious because we're using the same system. Right. And if you notice, I played. I played a completely different position. I played in a different part of the neck. I'm not trying to play. I suppose I could have started here and done the same same uh, position. Right. Yeah. I could have done that. Mm -hmm. But what's kind of neat about doing this by choosing a position that is a third higher, uh, it allows for for more range. I would have had to go, you know, start yeah. going on one string in order to get high and harmonize the whole thing. This way, by shifting up the position, this is just a really cool way to harmonize is by I'm choosing a, a position that's a third higher as opposed to just starting in the same position and pl and starting a third higher. Yeah, and, and the way it works really, if you look at uh, the guitar fretboard and we have a G major scale, really uh, the G major scale is gonna be 
there are notes from the geometric scale found all over the fretboard. And basically, we're splitting that fretboard into positions, making it easier for us to memorize. And that's what we're, we were using. I was using that first position, which is um, starting, you know, in that area of the fretboard, right. third fret, three notes per string. But you are, you are using also a three note per string position starting in that area. Starting on, on this B, with the, starting with these four frets. From the third note right. of that my third note exactly. right here, one, two, three, became your first note right here. And if we play both together, we still maintain the three note per string, so the same system, so it's going to be easier to play physically exactly. on the guitar. And this comes in really handy for sequencing harmony parts. Yes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, I'm going to play up here uh, starting with B on my first finger. Mm -hmm. And Dave is going to play down here. And we're going to just do a real simple sequence. Like, yeah. Uh, um, okay. Something like that. Okay. So you count us off again. Um, great. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your sequence? Uh, we'll do uh, we'll just uh, each string twice. Okay. Uh, like that. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four. Oh, two twice. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Three, four. <laughs> and so forth. But yeah, I get the idea. And and that is super easy because I was basically playing the same exact simple to play pattern that you had right harmonized yep. perfect so that's basically the intelligent harmony right but there is the dumb harmony which chris is going to demonstrate now. <laughs> <laughs> so one one way to illustrate dumb harmony it's not dumb it, it sounds cool actually it does it sounds kind of cool but we'll, we'll call it the the digitech whammy pedal harmony yes it's it, it's just it is what it is right um is by instead of taking so what we did is we took um, this pattern, and we we took notes in the G major scale, and we harmonized up here. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to take before we before we move to the pentatonic pattern, which is which is cool, we're going to demonstrate it with this same thing. Yeah. So I'm going to take this pattern, and I'm going to play it here in B. Mm -hmm. You're going to play here. Okay. And we're I'm always going to be. A major third up. I'm not going to be a major third and a minor third, depending on what G says, the key of G says. I'm yep. always going to be a third up. And it's going to sound an awful lot like a Digitech whammy pedal harmonizing unintelligent thirds. One, two, three, four. <laughs> That's unintelligent harmony. That yeah. works for some cases. Mm -hmm. But it's not as cool as, as following, you know, if you're, if you're going to play with another guitar player, mm -hmm. you may as well do it smart instead of dumb. Yeah. Although, I mean, that can have a really, like you said, a really interesting flavor, especially sure. played fast with a sequence. Right. Somewhere where it's unexpected. Yeah, right. That could be really cool. Let's give that a try. Maybe the same thing. I'll play it in G. You'll play it in, in B, mm -hmm. unintelligent. Mm -hmm. And we'll do um, a sequence like this. Okay, that kind of thing. Okay. Three. So that was the an intelligent harmony, and that can work sometimes, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, you brought up something before we started shooting. Mm -hmm. You did something really cool with the pentatonic scale, which is simpler than using the three on a string, especially for the unintelligent. It can sound kind of cool. Like yeah. The, the, so, yeah, the problem with the pentatonic scale is that it's a five-note scale. It's not really a real problem, but if you want to use it in a standard melodic uh, melodic way, the intervals of a minor pentatonic, for example, are one, minor third, fourth, fifth, minor seventh. Right. And if you decide to do a harmony a third up, for example, when I play the one, you play the third, and then I play the third, and your next note is the fourth, which you know is only a second apart, and the whole like system kind of like falls apart. It's kind of a weird. It it just doesn't work. Right. The way that you can make it work is to use that unintelligent uh, harmony, where you take the same exact shape. So if I'm playing something like this, for example, first position of G minor pentatonic, okay, just the standard pentatonic, you'd play the same exact shape, but you would start it, typically we do it a fourth up or a fifth up. 
So if this is my one, yeah, you would play the same exact shape, which in this case is a C minor, first position of C minor pentatonic. If we play that uh, ascending, we could start playing licks. Maybe you, you know this typical lick, right? Yeah. yeah, it's done a lot, that kind of thing. And uh, fifth up works really well too. So if we ascend that, just. Uh, Yeah, that's great. That works good. Yeah, and and especially on the fifth. I mean, if you did something that old Jimmy Page kind of. Yeah. Um, so where? I'm a fifth up. So. What is that? The your lick? Sorry. So I'm I'm doing. Oh. Uh, yeah. So if we did that together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a. No, a fourth. That's actually really cool. If you stay that there and I move between fourth and fifth, that works. Go. So that's kind of yeah. You could, you could have you know your 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 drums or drums. Your bass could be. Yep. You know, yeah. You know that could be the total the bass, and then this guy could be moving between mm -hmm. the fourth and the fifth, and you have this. It's unintelligent, but it's groovy. It's cool. It, it works great for maybe simpler forms of music, but awesome forms of music. Yeah. Um, and it works great for riffs, too. So if I've got something um, based on that minor pentatonic. Uh, So forth, yeah. yeah. Um, cool. That was fun. Yeah, I think my favorite of this whole video mm -hmm. was the last thing, the the simple pentatonic. Yeah, it's, it's it's tough to get away from sometimes. It is, and it's it's a, such a cool tool to have for overdubs when you're recording at home and you just want to highlight a part. You just do that kind of thing, and mm -hmm. you just kind of have to decide: intelligent, non-intelligent. If it's pentatonic, it's a no-brainer. All right, just. And you bring up a good point when you're recording at home and mm -hmm. you're layering your own parts. I think it's it's uh, it's sort of easier sometimes maybe to ooh a harmonizer pedal you know and yeah. you're yeah. but take the time to to record yourself and harmonize with yourself like this because there's so much more uh, experimenting and there's so many more happy accidents that mm -hmm. you can come across um, by interacting with your own playing. Yeah. So. Resist the urge maybe to pull out the harmony pedal or the harmony effect and and do it yourself. Record those extra tracks and see what happens. Absolutely. That is a good uh, ending words. Thanks. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Thank you for helping me set, it, set this up. That Absolutely. Was a, a lot of fun, but a lot of work too, so I appreciate it. You'll be back. I will. Thanks, everyone. Subscribe if you haven't. And... Um, three videos typically coming every week. Unless you're moving studios. Again. Unless I'm moving studios. Yeah. If, if not, you know, next time you'll have some curtains. I'll see you then. I have outing issues. Outing issues? Outing, ending, ending video issues. Yeah. Yeah. That is good, right? It could be good, good enough. <laughs> see you later. <laughs>